Markdown is a really great lightweight format for doing things like readmes in a Git repo. Maybe you want to take some notes while you're studying, or maybe you even want to have it as a base to convert it into other forms with things like Pandoc. Now, normally when you render Markdown, you're going to render it as a document because for most situations, that's just what makes the most sense. But Markdown is just a way to format your text. It doesn't actually specify how the document is supposed to be rendered. And what if we were to extend the Markdown to allow us to support some really cool features, and then rather than rendering the Markdown as a document, we render it as a sequence of slides. That's what today's app, Look At Me, aims to do. This describes itself as a terminal Markdown presenter. Now, when you install this with PIP, it won't actually come with all of the features, so there are a couple of things that are considered optional dependencies. So things like rendering images or rendering contents of a file won't actually be supported out of the box, you will have to go and install those separately. This Markdown document is an example provided alongside of the source code in the repo. Now, on the first slide here, nothing is really that surprising. So it renders things like italics and bowls and underlines and strike throughs the exact same way you'd expect any sort of terminal Markdown renderer to actually do it. But if we look in the bottom right hand corner, you might notice there's also some slides here. So if I go and press the right key, that will take us to the next one. The left key will take us back. We could also press J, L, or space to go to the next slide, or H, K, or backspace to go to the previous one. Now, as you might expect from a slideshow, it's not going to be cyclic, so once you get to the last slide, going to the next one is going to end the slideshow, and if you're on the first one, trying to go to the previous one isn't going to take you to the end. Moving on to the next one, this shows how the different headers are going to be rendered. Now, once again, there's really nothing that crazy here, but you might start to notice something about the theme. This isn't something that I've gone and set myself, this is actually defined in the document for the example. So like you'd expect with any sort of slideshow application, you can go and theme it the way you want. Now currently this theme is Monokai, but there's a bunch of others you can go with as well, or you can just go and make your own. The next few slides are kind of boring, but they demonstrate how general stuff is going to be rendered. So things like code blocks and quotes, rendered perfectly fine, things like lists and numbered lists, everything you'd expect from a standard Markdown renderer. I'll leave a link to the Daring Fireball page in the description down below if you've never had to write any Markdown, but it's a pretty simple format. Before we move on to extensions, I just want to talk a bit about how the document actually works. So right now, we're just looking at a static version of the document. So if I go and say, modify the source document, even on future slides, none of those changes are actually going to load. But we can actually go and change that by passing in a new flag. So this is going to be the dash dash live flag. And if we go and run this again, every time you launch a document with any extensions, even outside of live mode, it is going to warn you about them because some of the extensions, like the terminal extension, can actually be quite dangerous. So if we go and launch this, it is going to then tell us what the terminal extension actually does. Once again, we're going to press yes. And if I go over to my other screen now, let's go and say remove these lines in here. And if we go and save the document, all of those are now missing over here. So every time we make an edit, it is going to go and update it. This can be very useful if you're trying to do things like work out how exactly it's going to look, but you don't want to have to keep opening up the application. Keep in mind though that with extensions like the terminal extension, if you don't know who has access to the system, running things like that in live mode actually can be quite dangerous, but I'll get into why in just a bit. You may notice you can't actually see the entire QR code, but this application does actually support scrolling by using the up and down keys. Now, I don't know why they use J and K to go through the slides. I would have preferred them to also be scrolling keys. Now, if you want to use the QR code extension, it does show you what you have to include inside of the document. So basically it's treating it like a code block, but it's not actually showing you the other thing you need to do. The other thing you're going to need to do is inside of the metadata block at the top of your document, you'll need to include an extension section and include the QR code in that list. A metadata section like this is quite common if you work with things like Pandoc Markdown, but if you've only worked with, say, GitHub Markdown, you may have never seen this before. Now, this section is also going to be used for other things like defining the title, the date, and the author, so do keep that in mind as well. Personally, I don't know what you'll use a QR code for in a slideshow like this, but the functionality is here if you do want it. 
Something I do see how you would use, though, is the image rendering. This is going to render images with Uberzog, giving you full-on image rendering inside your terminal. Now, I can't guarantee this is going to work inside of every terminal, but I know it works in most of the true color options. And the way this works is fairly straightforward. So once again, we will have to include the Uberzug extension inside of our extensions list. And then if you've ever embedded an image inside of a markdown document on things like say GitHub, it works the exact same way. No weird extension here, just embed the image like you normally would. The last main extension is going to be terminal, which by itself isn't that dangerous because what this lets you do is embed a terminal inside of the slideshow. So I can do things like an LS and whatever other commands I want to run. Launching things like LF and then trying to move around inside of the file manager will crash the application though. So as long as it just outputs stuff back to the screen, it should be fine. But by itself, it's not that bad. So the thing that makes it bad is we can actually go and run commands inside of the document. So if I go and press Control A, that will then take the focus away from that terminal window. We can then go to the next slide, and this lets us embed things like, say, a Docker container inside of the slideshow. It should be fairly obvious what the problem with that actually is. You could very easily launch some malware on someone's system inside of a document like this. Obviously, the only person who's probably going to run this is yourself, but it is still something that is worth considering, and it would be safe not to just run random markdown documents in this application. However, if you just want to embed the terminal yourself, this example here is using bash as the shell with the dash i and the dash l option. Dash i makes bash act as the interactive shell, and then dash l makes it pretend as if it's a login shell, making it effectively work as if you've set bash as your standard shell. The options may be different, or you might not need any options whatsoever, but this should work with any shell out there. The first three extensions we looked at can all be installed from pip like you can with look at me, but for some reason, the last couple of extensions, we have to go and install manually from the GitHub. There are instructions inside of the readme for those extensions though, so it's not really that big of a deal. The first of those extensions is the file loader. Now this one is fairly straightforward. What it lets you do is take the content of a file and then merge it into your markdown file. So you can take things like a Python document and then merge it into the markdown document without having to go and copy everything over. And as it demonstrates here, if you wanna go and load a file, make sure you include the file loader extension in your metadata block, like with all of the others, then include the file code block along with the path to the file and then the language of that file. Now, if you're not using a programming file, make sure lang is set to something like text. If it's set to Python, it is still going to render fine but you don't actually need the highlighting being done there. The highlighting is mainly there if you're using a code file. You also have the option to transform a file before you actually load it. So what this is actually doing is loading up an image file, but loading it in as hex data. Most of this is the same as before. So we have a path to the file. The language is set to text because it's just hex data, but it's also using the transform option as well. And it's actually calling a program from it called XXD. So transform will go and send that file argument to the program, and then it will try to display whatever the output of that program actually is. And then lines in here let you define what lines to actually show. So in this case, it's going from line zero all the way up to line five. And then lines in here let you define how many lines to actually show. So it's using the implicit setting of start to zero, but start can actually be defined to a different number and it's including end. So what this is showing is from line zero, all the way up to line five. Throughout the entire video, I never told you how you actually define a slide. So everything is done in this one document, and the way you define something as a slide is between these two sets of three dashes is going to be one slide. So this is one slide here, this is one slide here, this is one slide here, so on and so forth. In the case of the last slide though, you don't actually need the three dashes at the end because it is understood to be the last slide and there's nothing else in the file. Honestly, I think this is a really cool idea. Now I know there are plenty of other things that do this, not just with Markdown, but with other formats as well. But even so, because of that extension system that sort of encourages you to go and add new features into your slideshows, 
I think this actually does have a pretty good use case. That'll be everything for me, and before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chica, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Mitchell, Peter, D, Stephen, T, Theroux, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support, we'll the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, sell, leave, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I live stream twice a week, and this channel is available over on Odyssey. So I think that's everything for me, and I'm out.